Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is the brand new 2022 WRX. Let's go ahead and do a quick walk around of the car. Let's take a look at it. Let's look at the body lines. As well as I want to take you guys in the interior of the car. I want to check out the front and rear seats. I want to check out the headroom, the steering wheel, and pretty much everything about the interior to give you guys an idea if this is a car that would be suitable for yourselves. So let's get into today's video. I hope you guys enjoy. If you like this type of content, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. So guys, we are down at the Tacoma waterfront, kind of near Point Rustin. We got a nice temple in the background. I figured that'd be a good place to do today's video, but let's go ahead and walk around the WRX. I want to show you kind of all the different body lines, the things that I see. So the first thing we need to talk about, the elephant in the room, is all the plastic cladding. Some people hate it, some people like it. At first I didn't like it, but now that I own the car, what I think is cool is when you get dirt and stuff, it mostly gets on the cladding, it stays off the body, it's easy to keep clean. If you get like rock chip, chips or scratches, it's not gonna eat up the paint on your side skirts. This stuff is kind of, you know, protected. And in the way that the body panels concave away from the cladding, it mostly stays off the car. Coming around to the front of the car, this is just the base model. I do like the grill. And when you wash the car, I think that's kind of one of the best ways to look at something. But this front lip, I think is really cool how it has like basically this little this little lip up, so it gives you extra downforce pushing down. I think Subaru did a pretty good job on the front bumper design. It does look pretty aggressive. I think they could have painted a little bit more of this plastic cladding. I think it is overly done, but it is supposed to be functional aero. It has like those little honeycomb things. That's supposed to help with the coefficient wind drag. As far as the headlights, they're LED across the board. So these are LED. Says it right there. Give the headlights, and I'll put some footage up on the screen of them at night as well. These LED headlights, look how bright the high beams are. Even the low beams, it's super easy to see what's going on. And I like the look of them. They're very sleek, very clean. Coming up to the roof line of the hood, I like how this body line comes up in a way. Same thing, there's another line here, and it kind of comes all the way up, all the way across to the A-pillar and then into the roof line, which I think is really cool. And then looking back at it the other way, <clears throat> looking at the hood scoop, I think Subaru did a very good job on the hood scoop design. It's a little bit wider than like the older STIs that sat up taller. So it's gonna be sleek and I think it's gonna probably have less wind drag and make less wind noise, but it reminds me of the hood scoop on the O2 WRX. Now as far as like this big plastic cladding, there's no fog lights or anything on the base model. There are upgrade things that you could buy to do some LED fog lights. There's no functional arrow or anything like that. But when you come around to the body lines, there is some functional arrow here to help get the air out away from the fenders. And then there's a little bit of uh, arrow here as well. So you got uh, fresh air able to come in and help cool the brakes. And the brakes work actually very good on this car. The only thing I've done is I put a set of Volk CE28s on the car. I do have a video of that if you'd like to watch it. But coming up and looking at like the doors and everything on the outside, I think it's pretty nice, just normal Subaru stuff. Handles are painted, the mirrors are painted. I like the, uh, I really like the contours of the car. So if you look at like the front fender, like it's very wide, sticks out, looks good. If you look at like the contours of the car versus like an O2 WRX through like 07, the doors were really flat and boring. These have a lot of contour. I mean, look at that bow that comes around, like that angular corners and the side skirt. Like the side skirt has lots of dimension. It sticks out like a good three inches away from the bottom of the door to the side of the side skirt. Other things that I noticed that help reduce noise is there's like a felt lining on the inside of the wheel liners. So there's like a felt lining in here that helps keep all that road noise down and wind noise, which is really cool. 
And looking underneath the car, you can see Subaru took things a step further. There's lots of plastic underbody paneling to keep the bottom of the car flat and to reduce wind noise, improving your fuel economy and the overall sound quality and give the car more of a premium feel inside. And then coming around to the back of the car, you can see how this quarter panel leads into the door and how it's all kind of angular to where it flares back out for the fender. The fender's got kind of like a wide notch to it. And even though in the past Subaru was an Impreza WRX, the new WRX does not have the Impreza badging and it doesn't share any body panels with the Impreza. It's a complete redesign. Every panel on the car is a WRX panel. And looking at the rear trunk line, even without any type of factory spoiler, you can see how the trunk deck lid kind of sticks out and it has a little bit of like a duck tail that sticks up. So it kind of has a built-in spoiler that would be functional to give you a little downforce without having to add anything extra. I think the back is pretty clean. I like the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive badging. I like the WRX. It has a nice rear backup camera that's tucked under here. I like this badging. I could have probably done without the piano black. Maybe a matte black would look a little bit better, but I can see how they're incorporating that into the taillights, which I do like the taillights. And coming to the rear bumper that a lot of people talk trash about, it is, I think, a little bit too much plastic. It needs to have a little bit more paint on it, which I'll do something with that probably later on. But the cool thing I notice here is there's actual functional vents here, right here. So this is functional aero. Air comes through here. And I've got a ETS exhaust system coming. I wanted to get today's video done before I got the exhaust installed. I like the shark fin antenna, it's cool. And then looking at all these pieces on the roof, how they've really reduced wind noise. Like there's no trim here at the top. This is all seamless. The windshield wipers are kind of tucked down far enough to where the wind blows over them so you don't get that wind drag and that wind noise. But what everybody is curious about is what's underneath the hood. So let's pop the hood, let's take a look at it. This is the brand new FA24 for the WRX. The FA24 Turbo has been out for a while and it is making 271 horsepower, 258 foot-pound of torque. So you guys might be wondering, okay, well, why does this car only have three horsepower over the old model, which when it was a two liter, this is a 2.4 liter, 20% more displacement. Most people are thinking, okay, 20% more horsepower. Well, Subaru is only running around 12 pounds of boost on this car versus the old car was closer to like 17 to 18 pounds. So once you tune this car and you add more boost, you could easily get an extra 50 horsepower. And they fixed a lot of different things with like the suspension handling. It's more dialed, it's more firm. Also the rev, ha the, uh, the rev hang that was, you know, when you'd shift on the FA20, the old WRX, the RPMs when it drop, which made it a big issue for driving. This doesn't do that, which is awesome. I wanted to touch lightly on the interior of the base model. So stepping into the car, you can see it does have nice cloth seats. They've got really firm bolstering, has adjustable headrest, which is fantastic to get your head positioning right. Myself, I got the base model. I like putting the key in the ignition. I'm just old school. Let's start it up. So stepping in, you guys can hear the door. It's a very nice solid thunk. You can see that the side material is the same cloth that is used on the seats. So everything matches. It's very well blended. You have a nice faux carbon fiber, nice buttons. You've got the, on the base model, you've got the dual infotainment screen, which I think is really nice. I think it's more matched to the base WRX or even the premium WRX. I don't like the look of the big center screen with all the glossy plastic on it. It looks like it belongs in like a Forester or an Outback and not a WRX. As far as the steering wheel, I think the steering wheel is a very nice material, even on the base model, you get leather, you get beautiful red stitching, you have all the different controls, you know, for your cell phone, radio, everything's all integrated. You got your information buttons down here, which switches the center screen. And then the stick, the stick shift is, you know, nice leather wrapped as well. And it's really nice, it feels great in your hands. As far as the shifter, it's exactly what you would expect from a Subaru. It feels like any conventional Subaru transmission clutch is what you'd expect as well nothing different and then the e-brake handle you get actual e-brake which is cool no electronic e-brake uh, this is only the option on the manual the CVT you get the electronic so this one is nice you know if you want to pull the e-brake and you know 
do a skid you can. And for all you moms and dads out there, if you're wondering, hey, does the back seat have enough space for my kids in the back? I'm 6'1", like I said, and there's plenty of space here. So this is me behind myself. The top of the roof in the back is a little tight for somebody that's taller, but as far as leg room, there's plenty of leg room. My legs are barely touching the seat. I've got plenty of space to move around. One of the things I really like about the interior is the roof liner is actually like a dark black or gray, which matches the seats where a lot of the old WRXs had once you got above this, you know, part of the door, it was like a gray material. So it just makes the car, I think, feel cleaner and better put together inside. In the back seat, there's no map pocket behind the driver's seat, but there's one in the passenger seat. You also have no USB or any options in the base model. The base model also does not have a rear armrest, but I do like the fact that the rear cover and the deck lid here is all plastic, which is kind of cool. So it's easy to wipe down and keep clean. I really wish Subaru would have put the speakers in the rear deck lid versus down on the door because the sound system, it's really hard to hear the sound. And as far as door panel material from front to rear, it carries through all the same cloth on the side. You got the nice, you know, extra padding here, nice buttons, faux carbon fiber. This is soft. Actually, you know, that's a hard touch here. Soft touch in the front. I like the base floor mats too. You get the nice red stitching, nice carpet. I like the fact that they've got black carpet through the cars now. You get some nice storage in the door pockets. You get a nice double cup holder. You get an armrest, which to me, Feels a little short, like if you're sitting in it, in the car, I could barely get my arm my arm to touch the armrest. Uh, basically, my arm will just rest on the seat bolstering, so that's kind of a, uh, a negative, but that's kind of a typical Subaru interior. My one big gripe is there's no sunglass holder. I wish there was a sunglass holder up here, so I just don't really have a spot to put my sunglasses, but I like the nice big center cubby here. And it's, you know, it's a functional interior. And one of my favorite features of these seats is the adjustable headrest. You can adjust these back, which is really cool. The base model, you get, you know, nice cloth seats with the nice red accent stitching matches the uh, shift boot and everything, e-brake boot, all that stuff over there. Adjustable manual seats, which I like because I don't really care to wait for the long, slow power moving seats. These seats have really good bolstering, which holds you in a position, but they're not perfect. The only drawback I would say is there's no lumbar, but they're very good seats, very comfortable for long road trips. All right, let's program the phone. Let's go home, phone. Would you like to add a new device? Yes, let's see how easy this is. Bluetooth, begin Bluetooth pairing. Make sure Bluetooth is active on the device. Bluetooth settings, uh, other devices, WRX, boom. Pops right up pretty easy. What I'm curious is if the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay work correctly. There's the pin, same as up here. And as long as I can talk and stream and everything, stream music and talk through the car, that's all I'm looking for. Would you like to register your contacts? Yes. iPhone 13 connected. All right, let's try, let's bring up uh, Pandora. Let's go. Let's go media, iPhone, no device connected. So it looks like I still have to put the cable into the car. Okay, so all you gotta do, if you're on like your radio, you go to media, once your Bluetooth is connected, Bluetooth is connected, hit Bluetooth, and then boom. So you're all good to go. It's hands-free, which is awesome. Let's uh, see. Let's bring up the nav and see if anything happens. So bringing up my work address. That's cool, the voice commands come right through. I can leave my phone right down here. One negative side with this is if you guys want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to actually play, you have to have the system physically wired with the USB to the phone. And unfortunately, the US, only USB inputs are up front here. So you gotta have all the cords hanging around. It would be nice if there was a USB in the uh, center armrest, but the only thing in there is just a 12 volt for a you know, phone charger. But as far as navigation, if you got that plugged in with the USB. Starting route. Go to home, go to Apple, Apple CarPlay. That'll bring up your navigation and everything so it'll work, you know, perfectly. And then you have little buttons right here so you can do all your different, you know, Apple CarPlay stuff. You've got your navigation map here, which is cool. You got your Pandora stuff, whatever you want to do. You got your phone options. So it's a pretty cool integrated system. 
The really only downfall of the base model is the stereo system. With the base audio system, the treble is super overly done. I don't think Subaru spent any time to tune this stereo system with the speakers because the tweeters that are up in the dash are so overly harsh that they just ruin the sound of the sound system. You have to turn them all the way down. My buddy had the same issue. He bought a base model. My friend bought the premium model and the sound system in that sounds like you know, a multi, multiple thousand dollars worth of stereo system that you'd have professionally done at like car toys. It sounds incredible compared to the, the base system leaves you wanting more. Let's take a quick peek at the uh, heating controls. So they're all down here. You can just easily hit whatever, you know, temperature. You can slide it up and down. It's pretty touch sensitive. You can go up or down one at a time or you can just, you know, jump to where you want. You got all your different functions down below. If you want, you know, just your front vents, floor vents, front, um, floor only defroster you've got uh, your recirc button I, I thought there was something wrong with it I was like trying to always turn it on and off from this when I got it but it's actually right up here so if you want to recirculate the air versus get fresh air in you do it there AC on right here fan speed up and down right here so it all works very simple kind of what you'd expect there's other buttons that gives you like other different stats you also have where you can slide over to the side you've got you know car settings for different settings that you can program in there if you want you have your driving st statistics so this shows that this vehicle is on like a six degree incline pitch which is cool there's like an automatic e-brake hold so when you're stepping or like coming to a stop on a hill and your car would generally roll back the car will hold the e-brake for you for like a couple seconds. So I'm not sure if it's the e-brake or the clutch that does it, but it doesn't roll back, which which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, you also have your maintenance schedule, so your engine oil, all that type of stuff. It's, it's all, you know, pretty intuitive. Definitely very cool over the old O2 WX that I had. And one last little thing, just looking at like the vents in the dash, I think these are pretty cool how they just slide back and forth. You can uh, twist these left to right to turn the vent on and off and I think they just feel a little bit you know more premium than some of the older vents and the older models although you can't mount your cell phone to it which is a, a negative but my cell phone will fit right here kind of like that but yeah it's a nice place like I said the interior is very spacious plenty of headroom up here for me my head doesn't touch the ceiling I'm 6'1 I've got plenty of space like in front of me it feels like it's a nice open non-cramped cockpit so well guys that's going to be it for today's video i hope that you guys enjoyed the outside tour as well as the inside tour of the car i really wanted to give you guys a good perspective if you're considering buying a brand new 2022 wx of what you can expect as far as build quality interior everything that comes with it everything you're going to get in that package and uh you know these cars even for the base model it's it's not a cheap car it starts at around thirty-one thousand, including destination if you go uh, up to the premium. I mean, you're looking at $40,000. So these are pretty expensive cars and uh, Yeah, it's a big investment you guys leave me some comments down below Let me know what you liked about today's video or what you like about the WRX and uh, I will have more content coming my buddy has a brand new Premium model so I will do a side-by-side -side comparison and go between the two between like interior sound system wheels body paneling fog lights all those different things you get with that car cost over this but I will have uh, a full driving review coming next i gotta edit that it's on my computer i'm almost done with it that'll be uploaded tomorrow so you guys stay tuned for that subscribe give the video a thumbs up turn on the notifications bell when that new video comes out you guys will get a chance to watch it but i will see you guys on the next video uh tomorrow and uh, also before i go thank you all all to the uh thank you very much to all the new subscribers we got about 400 new subs this month we're almost to 5k subs i appreciate all you guys and uh, thank you for watching me and uh, supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye. What a cool place to be. I figured I'd just come take a quick look at everything and just check out this uh, architecture while I'm here. And it's cool. Like you can see this stuff's made out of granite. And look at all the roof and everything here. This is cool. I've always wanted to come down here. I don't know why I never have. It looks like it's pretty well maintained. These little benches and stuff you could sit down here and come have a little lunch and a nice little bridge off in the distance and it's beautiful here it just overlooks the waterfront right down here in Tacoma
Port of Tacoma's right over there. You got ships out in the harbor.